Welcome to the Caltex Theatre, a full hour of dramatic entertainment broadcast over a nationwide network of stations throughout Australia. The Caltex Theatre is brought to you by Caltex Oil, marketers of over a thousand outstanding petroleum products in association with Caltex dealers and distributors everywhere. Tonight in the Caltex Theatre you will hear The Queen Came By, a moving drama of life among the staff of a large department store at the time of Queen Victoria's Jubilee. Starring tonight, you will hear Neva Carglin, your producer, Cresic Jenkinson. <laughs> The Caltex Theatre presents The Queen Came By, Act One. Guards, they're all in uniform. I simply must have a peep. Dinner or no dinner. My goodness, look at that one with the staff. Why ever doesn't he drop it? Oh, finish your dinner, Kitty. You'll be called out any minute. A hundred and three, not counting the goat. Goat? The mascot, Emmy. Oh, but that's nothing to what they'll have Jubilee Day. I've got it all planned where I'm standing, but it'll mean starting out from here at four in the morning. Let's make it a party, shall we? Well, we will see, Maud. Forward, Maud. Oh, you're required at your counter in the great store beyond. Through the door and serve, my girl. Serve. Oh, all right, Esther. Thanks. Oh, thanks, she says. <laughs> thanks for being told to go inside and serve again. Oh, my feet. Oh, my poor feet. Oh, whoever invented department stores anyway? Whoever did had no consideration for the feet of the saleswomen. Oh, that's a certainty. Have something to eat, Esther, and you'll feel much better. Uh, what is it? Oh, no. Oh, not that hodgepodge again. It tastes much better than it looks, Esther. Oh, it'd need to. Oh, what was the band about? Soldiers practicing for the Jubilee. Oh, that. Huh. You know, you'd think they'd cut those procession things out now. After all, this is 1897. All that royal pomp and nonsense seems a bit middle-ages to me. Esther, you shouldn't speak about the Queen like that. <laughs> what I says is not going to hurt our Victoria, dear. Oh, this mess they call food is ghastly. Esther, Maud wants us to get up a party on the day and start out first thing for a curbside view. Well, she can count me out. I'm going on the river. With Mr Goldfish? <laughs> His name isn't really Goldfish, dear. He just looks like one. He does that. I don't know how you could, Esther. Fancy being middle-aged, German, and a commercial traveller. Wouldn't surprise me if he wasn't married into the bargain. Oh, shut up, Kitty. Oh, I'm sorry, Esther. I was only joking. It wasn't a very good joke, I'm afraid. It was not. Well, I am sorry. I want to be gay today. Heaven knows I should be. It's my birthday. And I'd like to say... Why are the three of you in here at once? Oh, oh. <laughs> we're second sitting, Mrs. Peel, and people like you keep on interrupting us so we can't finish our meal. This is supposed to be a half day, and half day begins at two, not half past one. Hurry and finish, all of you. The maid wants to wash up. And I mean hurry. <sighs> when I see Mrs. Peel, I always feel sorry for Mr. Peel. Forward, Miss Muirhead. Oh, oh, what again? Oh, it's true what they say. No peace for the wicked. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry, Mr. Higgins. Oh, my fault, Miss Muirhead. Miss Lee, Miss Tape. Mr. Higgins. Morning, Mr. Higgins. Lovely day. Yes. Oh, yes, it is. 
Yes, indeed. Anything we can do for you, Mr. Higgins? Oh, I was just wondering if I could get this piece of material matched. Oh, well, there are all the bolts. Oh, yes. I'll match it for you, Mr. Higgins. Oh, it's no trouble, thank you. Oh, but I'd like to. I'd like to do anything today. Because I'm on top of the world, you see. It's my birthday. Yes, I know. I saw the birthday cake. Birthday cake? For me? Oh, I said the wrong thing. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <sighs> no, Sile. <laughs> I might have known. Really, I'm terribly sorry mentioning the cake. I, I, I didn't realize it was a surprise. Oh, that's all right. I, I suppose it would have been a miracle if the secret had been kept. Emmy, did you make it for me? Hmm? Oh, but of course you did. You're a darling as usual. <laughs> oh, let me see it, Emmy. No, no, not till tonight when we go home. Oh. Are we going to have a party? Well, that depends on how long Mrs. Peel stays out of the way. Forward, Miss Tape. Oh, you're all so sweet to me. And I love you all. You, Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> you, Esther. Oh, get on with your kit. <laughs> and you, Mr. Higgins. Uh, run along, Kitty. I said one moment. Is that the sort of behaviour you reserve for business premises in shop hours? Uh, she I... was only romping, Mrs. Peel. It's not the sort of romping Sir Oswald Carter Brook would encourage on his premises with customers waiting in his shop. And what are you doing here, Mr. Higgins? I came in to match this material, Mrs. Peel. Very well, match it. And return to your counter at once. I've done so, thank you. Forward by Billening. Miss Tate. Mr. Frisbee is calling you. Yes, I'm going, Mrs. Peel. And as for what she was doing in here when I came in... Would you mind moving out of the way? I'd like to see in the mirror. Fix my hair. Thank you. How long do you intend to remain here, vulgarising yourself, Miss Muirhead? I'm taking my 15 minutes dressing time. You've already exceeded it. You've been in here the best part of 20 minutes. <sighs> Well, that isn't much after five hours on me feet, is it? The manager shall be the judge of that. As you are senior hand here, Miss Lee, I shall want your support if I report Miss Muirhead to Mr. Frisbee. I'm sorry, Mrs. Peel. I, I couldn't give it to you. If I'm to be responsible for discipline here... Discipline in off hours, Mrs. Peel. The rest is Mr. Frisbee's concern. I sometimes think you forget I have personal access to Sir Oswald, Miss Free. You never give us a chance to forget that. I really must speak to Sir Oswald about all you women one day. Oh, silly old fool. I still haven't matched it, Miss Lee. The mm? shade's wrong when you get it in the light. Oh, well, we'll try the ginger brown on the second shelf. Mm. Oh, oh, yes, thank you. Uh, will Kitty get into trouble? I don't think so. Oh, that's good. I hope I haven't spoiled anything telling Kitty about the cake. Oh, I just wanted it to be a little surprise for her. You see, she's never had a birthday cake before. Well, nobody cares about your birthday when you live in an orphanage. Mm. You love Kitty very much, don't you? Yes, Mr. Higgins, I do. But then, so does everyone else here. Except Mr. Frisbee and Mrs. P. Oh, but, but your feeling's different. It's like the way a mother feels for an only child. What if it is? She's got no one else, has she? Oh, I wasn't criticizing. I think it's rather beautiful. Like a splash of color among a lot of drabness. Oh, that is nice to hear. You're in love with Kitty yourself, aren't you? No, I don't think she's interested in me. Oh, I wouldn't say that. She's got as far as planning the house she wants and... Um, that young chap, Albert Betterbees, has left the district, hasn't he? I think so. Then you have a clear field. Now, next time you're out with her, don't spend all the time talking about politics. But I'm interested in politics. Do you think she is, though, after 12 hours a day at the counter? But it's that negative attitude that makes these conditions possible. Think of all this trumpet braying about the Jubilee. We can't just sit down under it. Forward, Mr. Riggins. Oh, dear, that's your counter. But you're on our side, really. You must be. You read a lot. The right sort of stuff. If only you... Oh, do stop talking nonsense, Mr. Higgins. No, have you heard about the Fabians? We clean one out of those little Shantung suits, Emmy. They only came in the day before yesterday. Oh, 
Am I interrupting anything? Uh, no, dear. Uh, the repeat order on their suits arrived this morning. Now, I know exactly where to lay hands on them. Uh, you wait here, Kitty. Oh, you needn't bother him. Just, just tell me where they are. No, you'd never find them. I won't be long. Oh, well, all right. Thanks. Got your material yet, Kitty, Mr. Higgins? Ah, uh, yes, yes, I've got it. Look, Kitty, I, I never get the chance to say any of the things I want to say to you. I think you're the... Oh, Kitty, let's go to the Crystal Palace. I was down there last Thursday, and it's grand. But you love the life-size models of all the prehistoric monsters in the gardens. It sounds very nice. Paul, but... with the Manchester Colonel. But that's you, Mr. Higgins. But you will come, Kitty, won't you? I, I can't, Mr. Higgins. I I'm sorry. But... I'm sorry. I I'm spoken for. Oh, I see. So Albert Betterby's back again, is he? Yes, he's been away on business. Uh. Kitty, it isn't just because I'm fond of you myself, but Albert Betterby isn't your sort, and... You think he's common, don't you? Just because he doesn't speak like the people here. No, it isn't that. Who are we to talk class nonsense anyhow? It's, it's something quite different. He may be all right, but he's no good for you. Well, there's a suit in this box, Kitty. Now ask Emmy now. Go on. Ask her about Albert Betterby. Hmm? I don't see what Albert's got to do with you or Emmy, Mr. Higgins. But you hardly know the man. You're quite wrong about that. I know everything I want to know about him. He's very gay and kind and funny and... And what I think about him has nothing to do with you. Kitty? You'd better go inside now, Roger. Mr. Frisbee's been calling. Yes, Mr. Frisbee has been calling. Oh, no. It might interest you to know that there are two customers at the heavy counter, Mr. Higgins. Yes, Mr. Frisbee. Well, get going, get going. Yes, yes, I'm going now. And when you finish the heavy counter, there are one or two other things I want you to do. Oh. Oh. Emmy. Hmm. Emmy, what is it, dear? What's the matter? Are you in pain? Oh, no, 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 Esther. It's, it's nothing. It, oh, just a, a touch of indigestion, I, I think. Are you sure? Oh, you look all well, sort of... of course I'm sure. <laughs> oh, heavens, what a serious face and over nothing. Come on now, let's get things tidied up in here. It'll be closing time before long and we want to have the place looking clean and tidy by then, don't we? Hello, 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 and there's my Emmy today. Albert better be. You're back. I thought you'd gone away for good. It doesn't look like it, does it? Hey, what's going on here this afternoon, anyway? I notice quite a few of the staff still here. Mr. Frisbee made an announcement just after closing time. Seems that the Queen will be coming by here in the Jubilee procession. So the owner, that's Sir Oswald Carter Brook. He's so I wouldn't know. Well, he asked through Mr. Frisbee for volunteers to stay back today and decorate the windows in the, an empire theme. It's a sort of competition among all the branches. The best decoration wins a prize, you see. Oh, yes. And Mr. Higgins and the others are in there now doing their best to win the prize for this branch. Well, good for them. Hey, where's Kitty? She's gone upstairs to change. Oh. Well... I've got the surprise of her life for her when she comes down. You know what I got outside? A coach and six. I shouldn't wonder. A high sprung trap and the fastest trotter in Le Levi livery stables. And trust her, but he's sat behind them all. Oh. You know, it beats me how you people stay on year after year in this flea pit. No future in drape, old girl, none at all. Best thing Kit ever did for herself was to run into me. Hmm. I'll soon have her out of this. I reckon she's told you, eh? Tell me what? About us getting spliced. I don't think she takes you as seriously as that. And don't you believe it? She'll jump the minute I say go. Kitty's no fast trotter from Levi's stables, you know. <laughs> you don't like me very much, do you, Emmy? What makes you ask that? Intuition. My intuition's pretty smart. It's got to be in my line. And what is your line? Don't you know? Tea. I work for Gaten's, the Tea Kings, big place on A's Wharf. Officially, I'm a tea sampler. And unofficially? Merchant, working my own line of connections. 
Doing well it too. I buy rejected Chester tea at a knockdown price, then I sell it at one and two a pound. I see. And why do people buy your reject tea at one and two a pound? Well, they can get Gaitons for the same price. Cause I've got a key to the label department. My tea goes out with a Gaitons label on it. Oh. Smart, eh? Not very. Huh? But thank you for telling me about it. It's what I've been waiting to hear. Now, do you recognise this? Yeah, of course I do. It's one of my pound packs. That's right. Now, you either stop going out with Kitty after today, or this pound of tea will find its way to your employers with a letter, asking them to examine the contents. Hey, what do you mean, worming all my business secrets out of me? I knew all about your business, all but the details. But Kitty thinks she's in love with you, and I can't afford to make a mistake. Do you think I'd stand by and see Kitty get mixed up with a cheap little cup purse like you? Right, well, what's it to be, Albert? Kitty or the police? You'd never dare tell Gaitens. I'd dare a lot more than that for Kitty. Why, you blackmailing old... Why, hey, Albert! Uh, oh, uh, hello, Kit. What are you doing here? You said you wouldn't be calling for me. Oh, I changed my mind. Oh, I'm glad about that. A gentleman should call for his lady friend. Yeah. Well, I'm ready to go if you are. You're all right. Emmy? Mm? Uh, Emmy, it's not right for you having no half day. Oh, Mr Higgins is keeping me company, dear. Now, don't be late back to supper, will you? Not tonight, I won't. Good. Give her a nice time, Albert. Yeah. I'll give her a nice time, all right. Now, come on, kid. Bye, Emmy. Bye-bye, dear. <laughs> Emmy, mm. look, I, I borrowed these gloves from Maud's locker. Uh, they look all right with this dress. Yes, very nice, Esther. But will Maud mind about you borrowing them? <laughs> oh, too bad if she does. <laughs> no, uh, we got an arrangement about borrowing. Oh, well, off to the goldfish, I suppose. Oh, Miss Muirhead, I'm glad you haven't gone. I was just going, Mr Frisbee. I'd like a word with you first. Uh, oh, er... Uh, well, if I'm staying here this afternoon, I'm going up for my bedroom slippers. You'll excuse me, Mr. Frisbee. Of course, Miss Slough. You needn't be diffident about not staying on today, Esther. I only ask for volunteers. That's what I understood. I'm not being diffident, Mr. Frisbee. Why, Mr. Frisbee, all of a sudden? We had all that out last week. Oh. I'm uh, sorry I lost my temper that day. Regretted it ever since. I'm afraid I haven't, Mr. Frisbee. I think I've stood a good deal for the little I've had back from you, Esther. Oh, you always make everything sound nice and commercial, George. I suppose it's force of habit after years of floor pounding. Well, you aren't exactly uh, checking yourself, are you, my dear? Or does the goggle eyed German think you are? Whatever the goggled eyed German thinks, George. He doesn't expect to pour me three times a week in exchange for a blind eye and business hours. I do get a meal and a music hall out of him now and then. Well, I... B uh, well, I, I told you, Esther, it's too risky to take you out weeknights. If I was single... If you if... were single, we could embrace on Clapham Common instead of in the stock cupboard. What sort of a fool do you think I am, George? Oh, I should never have made a bargain with you in the first place. If you're nagging at and driven me nearly out of my mind. Oh, well, at least I'll get something out of it, I suppose. You can't sack me. You can't scale down my money in fines. And you can't even nag me any more. So, let's leave it at that, shall we? I could do a good deal for you, Esther. You'd only treat me right. Treat you right? Oh, you sleazy little grub, George. You can go to hell. Good day. Girls, all oh, the most wonderful news. Oh, where is everyone? 
I thought there was supposed to be a party here for Kitty tonight. <laughs> Kitty and the others will be here directly, Esther. You're early. <laughs> oh, well, trust me to time it badly. <laughs> Oh, I was going to lay you all on your ears with my little piece of information. Oh, well. Oh, what is it, Esther? What's happened? Maud, my dear, as the French say, regarde. Oh, oh, Wemmy, look. Oh. Esther's got an engagement ring on her third finger oh, left. Oh, Esther. Oh, Esther, he's asked you. He has. Oh, my dear. Dear, congratulations. Oh, thanks, Emmy. Oh, yes, congratulations, Esther. Where did it happen? Oh, you'll never guess. Opposite the duck pond in Battersea Park. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and on his knees. Absolutely down on his knees. Oh, isn't it marvellous? Hey, let's have a look at the ring again. My, a sapphire on diamond trimmings. Of course, it's much too big to be real. This is real, my girl. Make no mistake about that. Yes, Maud. What a dreadful thing to say. Oh, I didn't mean it. Oh, well, you know me. I'm always saying the wrong thing. And you say he got down on his knees, Esther? Mm, I did. Oh, it was all so romantic. He started kissing my hands and calling me his... Uh, his labour snort or something. Oh. <laughs> and how did you know he was proposing? Oh, more. Oh, well, a man don't go down on his knees to ask you the time, now does he? And what did you say? I said, oh, I said, it, it sounds ever so nice, Mr. Meyer, but couldn't you say it in English? Well, he laughed. He looks ever so much younger when he laughs. And then he took out the ring. He put it on the seat. And he said, if I meant, yeah, I was to take it, and if I meant nine, I was to throw it to the ducks. Oh. Well, I mean, it wouldn't have been much good to them, would it? So I took it. Oh, just as well too, I say. You're not allowed to feed anything to those ducks, you know. <laughs> well, I only meant... <laughs> oh, oh, well, it's grand that it's happened at night, oh. Esther. Well, now we can have a double celebration. Where's the peas pudding? <laughs> oh, glory! I'm sitting on oh, it. No. Oh, no. Oh, Esther. Oh, dear. I thought it was your hot water bottle. Oh, Esther, oh, I was so looking forward to that pudding. Oh, dear. Oh, well, you're welcome to all you can scrape off. Oh, Amy, I must be a terrible mess. It's will clean off, dear. Oh, dear. Now, you'll have to make do with the ham, Maud. Oh. Here, take your frock off, Esther. Oh, yes. oh, it'll be all over everything. Oh, dear. All right, then. Here, give me your hand. Right. Yes. Now, now, come on. Oh, oh. No, don't oh, oh, it. stop! Oh, the, oh, oh, it, it's caught in me stays. Well, Esther, will oh, you keep still? Oh, oh Emmy, oh, here, oh, take off the stays. Oh, oh I'm suffocating. Oh, you're not. Now, oh. come on, keep still. Oh, oh, goodness. Oh. It's Mr Higgins. Oh, what on earth's he doing here? I've asked him to the party. He can't come in. Look at my hair. Oh, just a minute, Mr Higgins. Here, tie this handkerchief around your head and jump into bed. Oh, well, will somebody get me out of yes, this? Yes, yes, don't panic now. There you are. Oh, oh. Now get into the other room now and get on another frock. Oh, this place gets more and more like a French farce. Are you ready, Maud? Yes, all set. Uh, you can come in now, Mr Higgins. Ah, evening, everyone. I'm a little late, I'm afraid. Uh, better late than never, though, Mr Higgins. Oh, very true, Miss Murch. Is there anything wrong with you? I hardly expected to see anyone in bed. Oh, no, I'm fine. Oh, it's just, uh, um, well, it, it's uh, more convenient. <laughs> Makes more room if I'm out of the way in bed. Oh, I see. Uh, I've brought this, Miss Lee. Oh, that's very kind of you. Oh, Maud. Maud, look, it's another piece pudding and piping hot. Oh. <laughs> we had an accident with the other pudding, Mr Higgins. Esther sat in it. And she got engaged. <laughs> Slightly burnt, too, I imagine. Oh. <laughs> Am I being talked about? Oh, hello there. Welcome to the party. Oh, thanks, Miss Muirhead. Esther, oh, for heaven's sake, look, let's not have any of this formality tonight. It must be Esther, Emmy, Maud, and Roger. Yes, right. you're That's right, right, Esther. And uh, what's this about your being engaged, Esther? Did uh, Mr. Meyer pop the question? <laughs> he did. Hey, what do you think of it? Oh, yes, that's a very nice ring. Congratulations. Thanks, Roger. Oh, 
Uh, what do you got there? Is that a present for me? <laughs> oh, well, no, Esther. Actually, it's a birthday present for Kitty. Ah, oh. Oh, you're a dear boy. And I'm sure she'll love it, whatever it is. Oh, well, now, come on. We'd better do something about the drinks. Where's the fruity Madeira, Duchess? It's there on the table, Esther. Oh, well, then, leave the drinks to me. I'm an expert at filling glasses. What? Here she is. Oh, oh come on in, Kitty. We're all ready for you. We've got... Oh. Happy birthday, Kitty. Yes, dear. Happy birthday. What's the matter, Kitty? Go away, all of you. Go away. Kitty, what? What's the Don't you touch me. But... God, oh, I just... Don't don't Please, I I'm sorry, but just leave me alone. Perhaps it might be better if you do as she asks. Would you mind? No, of course not. Uh, well, good night. Hester. Uh, Maud, perhaps if you went to your room. Oh, yes, sir. Come on, Maud. Out of Emmy's bed and into your own. But, Kitty, we well, were going... Maud. Yes. Oh, come in, Hester. You'd better get undressed, Kitty. Come on, get into bed. Don't you speak to me. Was it Albert? What did he say? What did he do to you? I said don't speak to me. Oh, come on now, Kitty, be sensible. I'm supposed to be your best friend. Best friend? That, that's a laugh. Kitty. I know I haven't got many brains, but I must have been an absolute idiot ever to take any notice to you. Or to trust you. Oh, I wish I were dead. I wish I were dead. <laughs> And so the curtain falls on Act One of tonight's Caltech's play, The Queen Came By. Faster starts, smoother acceleration, more economical running. That's what you get from Caltech's butane boosted gasoline. The gasoline designed to take better care of your car's performance. Next time you fill up, change to Caltech's butane boosted gasoline. Your car will respond more readily, tick over more smoothly and steadily. Caltex butane boosted gasolines at the sign of the Caltex Star, where we take better care of your car. You'll be happier by far when you stop at the Caltex Star because of all the things we do. And we take pride in serving you. The Caltex Theatre now presents Neva Carglin in The Queen Came By, Act Two. Cubby and Roger. I thought you'd like to know. Kitty's come in. Oh. Where, where is she? In the window packing cotton wool around my snow scene. Well, she won't come up if she knows I'm here. Have you got any sort of plan about her, Emmy? No, no plan. Just a resolution to let her make the first approach. I see. Isn't there a touch of pride about that? Pride? Do you suppose I've got any pride where Kitty's... I'm sorry. I suppose it does look rather like that. And I suppose you're wondering where you come in. Oh, I never stood a chance anyway. Listen, Roger. Albert may have seemed a cheap little fraud to us, but he saw something we didn't see. He saw that Kitty wasn't a child any longer, but a woman. He treated her like one. <sighs> yes. Well, it's Frisbee I'm worried about. If she goes on mooning about the way she is at present, she'll get sacked. Any fool can see that. Well, let's not go looking for that sort of trouble. How's your window display coming on? I think it's grand. Everyone does. Oh, that... I only do that to play along with Frisbee. I want to keep in with him till the time's right. Ah, yes, the right time. I'd almost forgotten about the Fabians. How are they, Roger? They're doing all right. That's what I came to see you for, really. It's, it's about these. Mm -hmm. oh, go on. Read one. Oh. To Her Majesty the Queen, 
Never mind about the Empire Monkey Parade, ma'am. Fair play for the shop assistant. What does it mean? Is it some sort of war cry? Uh, it's our jubilee propaganda. Some of the old fogies were against it, but we carried a motion to distribute these amongst the jubilee clouds on the day. Don't you think that's rather a shame? A shame? Yes. All those people looking forward to something they've read and talked about for months. A bit of colour for once in their lives. Something they're out really to enjoy. And then you come along with a leaflet to remind them that they're due back behind the counter at 8.30 prompt the next morning. But they have to be awakened, Emmy. I don't think this is the way to get better conditions. What other way is there? I think it's better to work on individuals rather than on the masses. Huh? You know, Roger, if enough of you get worked up over a good cause, you're bound to win. But what's so awful is that by the time you've won, you've all got so bad-tempered about it that the cause isn't good anymore. And before you know where you are, somebody's got to start a campaign against you. We aren't plotting Red Revolution. We leave that to the anarchists. But it isn't what you are, Roger. It's what you become. Some of these people I've heard tub thumping in the park would regulate your food as well as your shop hours. But Emmy, you've got it all wrong. We don't want to run people's lives. We only aim on taking over the industrial machine. But when a person's tied to the machine for a bread and butter, it amounts to the same thing, doesn't it? Oh, I give up, Emmy. You're kind and sweet and gentle, but you're a perfect reactionary. What's a reactionary? Oh, never mind. I still think you're on our side or I wouldn't ask you a favour. You don't want me to distribute these leaflets, do you? No, only to mind them for a bit. Mind them? What for? Look, I'm trusting you more than I should. On Jubilee Day, I'm not distributing them. I'm dropping these leaflets from a top story. I'm throwing them down to the street. Good gracious. When? During the procession. The moment the Queen comes by. On the Queen? Well, not on her exactly. They probably nabbed me for treasonable assault. But on the crowd, just after she's passed. But you'll get into dreadful trouble. And you're bound to be sacked. I know that. But I came here for a special job, and this is it. Why drag me into it? Because these leaflets aren't safe in my room. There's no lock on my trunk. I wouldn't put it past Frisbee to sneak when I'm out. Uh, all right, then, Roger. I'll keep them for you. Thanks, Amy. And, you know, if, if you only studied our draft charter... Oh. oh, Kitty! No, don't go, please. I, I thought Amy was by herself. Look, Kitty, it's the hottest day we've had in weeks. Now, why don't you and me take the tram out to Greenwich? It's pretty down there. I've always wanted to take you. We could go round the observatory and have tea. You look so tired, and... Well, you'd enjoy it. I know you would. I'd like to talk to Emmy, if you don't mind. Huh? All right. Whatever you want. Emmy? Yes, Kit. What is it, dear? They've taken Albert to prison. No. Did the policeman take him because of you? You must tell me. Because of me? Of course not. Albert thinks you followed us in the evening. What? Yes, I've seen him every night since... since that night. Each time there was someone following him. But it wasn't me, Kit. I, I didn't even know you were still seeing him. Well, you do believe me, don't you? Yes, I suppose so. Well, you must believe me. I know how annoyed you've been with me. Albert telling you just about everything I said to him. But I'd say it all again to him, Kit, because I still have your interest very much at heart. Don't you see, dear? He was bound to get caught in the end. He wasn't really clever. He only thought he was. There's a bit in this newspaper about him. That's how I first found out what happened. Show me. Did he really cheat? Do you think like the way it says in the paper? Pity his whole life was a cheat. And that's what I was terrified about in case you got mixed up in it. Hmm. From the look of this, the police have been watching him for some time. What'd they do to him? Keep him there in prison, of course. How long? I don't know, dear. It depends. Kitty, when he comes out of prison... It, it doesn't matter when he comes out. What do you mean? When I read this, I went to his lodging. His landlady told me he'd been to prison before. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Kit. And while I was there, another woman came out of Albert's room. 
She was dreadful. And when she saw me, she, she just stood there and laughed. She'd been living there all the time with him, and she knew all about me. Oh, you poor darling. You... And, and when Albert and me went out together, he was so funny and nice. He just seemed to belong to me. I was never so happy as when we were out together. Well, you just have to put him out of your mind now. Forget about him, Kit. You can't have someone belong to you almost a year and, and then pretend to yourself that he isn't there anymore and won't be ever. It wasn't just like two people walking out together. Me and Albert, we... Oh, Emmy, I, I know it was wrong now, and I ought to have told you about it before. I wanted to. I was afraid you'd be angry. And it didn't seem wrong at the time. Only when that awful woman came and stood on the stairs and, and laughed at me. That's what made me see it was wicked. Oh, how could I have been such a fool as not to know? Was it wicked, Emmy? Will I get punished? You, you think so, don't you? You think it was wicked? You're not wicked. It's me that was wicked. It's my own fault, all of it. Go on treating you like a child. Then you aren't angry with me? No, no, not with you, Kit. You still don't know anything about these matters, do you? But, Emmy, I, I know enough to realize I'm going to have a baby. Oh, oh Emmy, what am I going to do? I, I'll die, Emmy. Yes, there. I'm going to die. God's punishment. No, no, nonsense. Listen to me. Listen, Kitty, listen. You aren't going to die. You suppose that somebody dies every time a baby's born? There's no need to be frightened, dear. I'm here to look after you. Now, you're not to tell anyone about this. Not even Esther. Do you understand, Kitty? Yes. Now, listen, dear. Listen to everything. I know a doctor. He'll tell me how to look after you till the baby comes. I talked to him in the cutting room when he came with his wife the other day. I'll take you to him now. I'll get his address from the book. I know where Mr. Frisbee keeps the keys. I'll go now, Kitty. I won't be a minute, dear. Just sit there and, and rest, Kitty. I, I, I must get out of here. Go away. I can't burden myself on Emmy. I must go away. <laughs> still for dinner? Oh, the first party hasn't finished yet, Mrs. Peel. We've been terribly busy. <laughs> Nobody considers me. Cook's determined to watch the procession when it comes. That'll mean we can't clean for tea till gone 3.30. Well, we can't help it. With all these people outside waiting for the Queen to come by, there's scores of customers coming in and out. I'll give the first party another ten minutes, and after that they can go hungry. <sighs> oh, if it isn't like Frisbee to open on a day like this. I suppose this muck is Carter Brooks' idea of a jubilee banquet. <sighs> the food's all right if you don't think about it too much. Esther? Hmm? You know, sometimes I think Kitty's dead. Oh, rubbish. She's found another billet somewhere. Emmy's been to the police. Only yesterday. Did you see the letter she had this morning? Only a glimpse. It wasn't a proper letter. It was sort of a, a printed form. She just glanced at it, asked me to cover up for her, and went off without even waiting for breakfast. Still, I suppose she knows what she's doing. Hmm, I expect so. That Albert better be. He's the one who started all this trouble off. I hope they never let him out of prison. Fancy him passing off that reject tea with Dayton's brand on it. Cool, eh? Ah, oh, idiotic. He should have known he'd never get away with that sort of thing for long. Anyway, now they've found him out, he won't be getting up to any more shady business deals for a long, long time. Forward, baby linen. Oh, that's me again. Why on earth do people want baby linen on Jubilee Day? <laughs> the stalk doesn't stop for processions, do you? <laughs> any more news about Kitty, Esther? Oh, no. No, Amy's been out searching again. She isn't back yet. Oh, dreadful business. Poor Kitty running off like that. Yes, it is. Yes. Frisbee knows Amy's out. 
Oh, does he? I heard him telling a customer the milliner wasn't available. Oh, she'll catch it when she gets back in that case. Maybe. There's a fine crowd down there looking in our windows. <laughs> a great thing you did for us with your dreaded display. Oh, if it keeps us on the go much longer, I'm going to sit in the window and show the customers what the Empire's done to my feet. Well, perhaps I have some news that could brighten you up a little. I heard just a moment ago we got a first in the window competition. We what? Oh, well, for heaven's sake. Well, why are you so calm about it? I was satisfied we had a good chance. It wasn't much of a surprise when the news came through. Oh, well, I think it's wonderful. Oh, the first in all of London. Oh, not oh. exactly that. They decided to split the class into inner and outer London branches. We got first in the suburban class. Oh, trust them. Who won the inner? Oxford Street. Oh, yes. A tonier address would have to win it. <laughs> Still, I suppose it's not bad to be first in the suburbs. We've done a record turnover this morning, too. That's going to make us all millionaires, isn't it? And something else, too. Sir Oswald Carter Brook is coming down to see us sometime today. I think I might faint with the excitement of that. Shop sir. Glove counter. <sighs> roll on, wedding bells, roll on. Get me out of this as soon as you can. <laughs> Roger. Emmy, you startled me. I wanted to get in here as quietly and unobtrusively as possible. In you go, Kit. Hello. Kitty. Oh, thank God. Here, sit down. What's happened? Where did you find her, Emmy? In the South London Infirmary. We've just come from there. Oh, the poor kid. Now, listen, Roger. We haven't got much time. Somehow we've got to persuade Mr. Frisbee and Mrs. Peel to let us stay long enough. Kitty and me so that we can find a new billet. She's too weak to go traipsing around, and I've had about as much worry as I can stand. Well, you don't have to worry any more, Emmy. I've got a better idea. We've won the window competition, and I'm going to ask head office for a position as West End window dresser. What good would They get good money. A man can get married on that sort of job, and... Kit, will you marry me, Kit? I'll look after you. I'll always look after you. You don't know about me. You couldn't want to marry me now. I know everything about you. I've been out looking for you every night since you ran away. I'll oh, say you will, Kit. And I promise you, you'll never regret it. Are you sure that you can land that job, Roger? Certain. I can be out of here in a week. Why don't you leave me? I've got Emmy into all this trouble. Roger's asking you to marry him, Kitty. Oh. You don't have to say yes right now. Let me get out of here, Kit, and then you can think about it. You're just being kind, Roger. No, I'm not just being kind. I love you. I've always loved you. Emmy knows that, don't you, Emmy? Hmm. Well, we'll still need a week. Kitty's got to have rest. And you've got to land this job. Send Frisbee in here, Roger. And whatever you do, you keep your temper with him. Everything depends on that. I'll settle with Frisbee myself, Emmy. No, no. You have to rely on his reference to get to the head office. I know exactly what to do if you leave this part to me. Now, you get Frisbee here. Stay here, Kitty. All right. We'll try it your way. Oh, uh, Mrs. Peel. Don't worry, Kit. Everything's going to be all right. Oh, so you've decided to come back. Mr. Frisbee, I... I've sent for Mr. Frisbee, Mrs. Peel. Oh. Well, uh, now you see what happens when you presume to take my place on the staff, Miss Slee. Please, Mrs. Peel. Well, 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 here we are again. Prodigal and truant in double harness, eh? I had an idea you'd turn up together. Mr. Frisbee, I've got something to say to you. You have a good deal to say, if I'm not mistaken, and so has this, uh, somewhat independent young lady. My word, you're looking somewhat the worse for wear, aren't you, Miss Tape? I'll give you three minutes to get your thins. Go upstairs and lie down, Kitty. Yeah, just a moment, just Do a moment. Do as I say, Kitty. And tell Mr. Baddington that Mr. Frisbee will see him in one moment. Very well, Amy. And who... Is Mr. Barrington? The court welfare missionary. Court missionary now? <laughs> Are you going to tolerate this another moment, Mr. Frisbee? You'd better listen, both of you. Why? What have you got to say? Mr. Barrington has just escorted Kitty over here from the South London Infirmary. He's now waiting outside. There are some papers to sign. Now then, do you want him in? Or are you going to listen to me? I don't want the firm to get mixed up with any police court people. What was she doing in the infirmary? She was taken there. 
after she tried to commit suicide. Good heavens. Is that what the missionaries come about? No. We well, don't. what made her do a thing like that? For the same reason that a good many other girls throw themselves into canals, Mr. Frisbee. You don't mean she's going to have a child? She was. Oh. But a fortnight ago, she threw herself into the Surrey Canal. There was no guard rail where she went in, so they think she fell in by accident. And there's no charge against her. Oh. Well, she can't stay here. You and she could both get out. I'm sure Sir Roswell wouldn't like to hear about this. Would he, Mr. Frisbee? Do you think Sir Roswell would keep a girl like that on his premises? Of course he wouldn't. But what have Kitty and I to lose? If I sent the missionary up west to see Sir Oswald, I don't think that either of you would come out very creditably, do you? You go to Sir Oswald and be damned. This isn't my concern, it's Mrs. Peel's. Mine? She's housekeeper here and she's paid to handle this sort of thing. I'm not. I'm business manager and this has nothing to do with me. Oh, I think it has, George. Huh? Well, if you look at it all the way round. Get out of here. Confound you. I'm leaving here too, George, and I've got nothing to lose. You'd better do what Emmy says, in case she persuades me to uh, take a trip up to headquarters. I could always say I was asking Sir Oswald for protection now, couldn't I? All right, but I'll get even with you for this if it takes me a lifetime, Slee. And you too, Muirhead. Temper, George. Be quiet. Where is this missionary? He's waiting in the passage with the back door. And thank you so much, Mr. Frisbee. I was quite sure you'd see my point of view. Ah. What's the latest, Esther? They're all shut up in Mrs. Peel's sitting room. Mrs. Peel herself, Mr. Frisbee, Emmy, and Sir Oswald, too. Oh, and Mr. Higgins. Well, what's happened to him? Oh, he's packing. They sacked him without even a week's notice money. Oh, the way he started giving Frisbee and Sir Oswald pieces of his mind. <gasps> Out on his ear. Oh, what a shame. And Kitty? Oh, she's sitting up there on her bed saying nothing. Just sitting and... Looking fit to drop, poor kid. Oh, there's my husband to be calling me. Oh, well. Bye bye, Mort. I'm off now. Oh, I'm leaving too now. So if you wait till I get my hat on straight, I'll come down with you. All right. Oh, it's going to be lovely, isn't it? <laughs> Mixing in with all the crowd and everything. <laughs> Not for me. Goldfish and I are getting far away from it. Oh, come on, come on. Don't take all day with that hat. Oh, I'm coming now. Coming. Very well, Sir Oswald. Oh. oh, dear. Oh. Emmy. Uh, oh. Uh, y yes, Roger. What did they decide about Kitty? Uh, Sir Oswald's going to see her himself directly. The procession's gone by. Mm. Well, they can't do a thing to it except sack her. Emmy, I'm going to take her away. Where? What? I said, where, Roger? You've lost your job. And you won't get a character reference, and you'll never land another billet without one. I'm going after some full-time political work. I see. And what's pay? Very low, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. You won't get a chance to take Kitty, Roger. She's a foundling, and Sir Oswald says he's legally responsible for her till she's 18. He's sending her to a home for girls. What did you say? Yes, I know. That's what he said, a girl's home. Well, he can't do that. She hasn't done anything wrong. I've heard of those places, Emmy. They're like prisons. The girls are boarded out as drudges, and it's a criminal offence to abscond. They, they can't do that to her. They're going to do it in about 20 minutes' time. But there must be some way. Yes. Yes, there is a way if you listen to me. Down at the infirmary, I signed papers accepting responsibility for Kitty until she's of age. It was witnessed by a member of the Board of Guardians. And he says that the latest document will hold good. So that makes me Kitty's legal guardian. Oh, then it's all right. You only have to tell them that and we can take our time. It's not all right, Roger. And there isn't much time. Why not? Well, you see, I, I'm dying, Roger. What? This pain of mine. But you've always said it was nothing. Oh, well. But I can't pass it off so lightly anymore. I've been to Guy's hospital, and there's nothing they can do for me. Oh, Emmy. No, no, Roger, don't waste tears on me. 
Now, I've got a plan for you. But it means you and Kitty leave in London immediately. But you, Emmy, what about you? Oh, it sounds wild, but I don't see why it shouldn't work. You only need a clean start, both of you. And you're young. And that's the best thing in the world. Now, here. What's this? To help you get that clean start. It's just short of 60 sovereigns. Oh, no, I couldn't take your money. It's for Kitty. I saved it for her. But... No, don't protest about anything. Just listen to me. Here. Here's a letter to my brother-in-law. He's got a farm in Cheshire. And you can work with him. You're young and you're strong and you'll love it. And so was she. All right, Emmy. I'm prepared to do what you ask. But Kitty will never leave without you. And suppose you leave Kitty to me. But we couldn't just leave you, either of us. Roger, I beg you to do it for her sake. And mine. I know I have to die soon. But I'll die happy if I can only know that Kitty's happy. Happy with you, Roger. Oh, please. Oh, come in here, Kit. Come close the door. What is it? Kitty, darling, you're going away. What? Roger's taking you away to my brother-in-law's farm in Cheshire. The one I told you about. Oh, it'll be lovely, dear. You'll enjoy it so much. Aren't you coming too? No, no, I, I won't be able to come. I won't go without you. Well, I mean, I, I won't be able to come for a while, but you must go, Kit. Otherwise, Sir Oswald will send you away, and you wouldn't like it where he'd want to send you. But, but why aren't you coming now? It's it's a question of money, that's all. I, I've got to stay on and collect my wages and all lots of things. But, but I don't understand. Why should they... You must trust me, Kit, and do what I say this minute. Emmy's right, Kit. We'll uh, explain everything to you later. Will you come, my dear? I know I can make you happy if I get you away from all of this... Well, if Emmy says it's right, it's right. That's the way. Stay here, kid. I just have to pack the rest of my things and then we can go. I won't be a moment. Oh, kids. You're going to love farming. I know you will. Sure I will, Emmy. You know, I can't imagine Roger loving me. That's only because you can't imagine love yet. Not fully. But he does love you so much. He'll make you the happiest woman in the world, my darling. Yes, I have a feeling you're right about that, too. Is that the bagpipes? Mm. It must be. Yes, Emmy, look, it's the queen coming by. I saw her, Emmy. I saw the queen. Did you, darling? How wonderful for me. Yes, it was. All my things, I must go and pack my things. Yes, darling. Then when you finish, go to Roger's River. Oh, I, I won't be here when you come down again. I, I'm going out, you see it. I'll see you soon. Very soon? I hope so. Amy, I love you. And I love you, kid. There. Now, go and pack. And go to Roger. Bless you, Amy. Try to let me know when you're coming down to us. Yes. I'll be waiting for you. Bye. Goodbye. Oh, what a lovely day. What an absolutely perfect day. <laughs> So ends our Caltech's play, The Queen Came By. In a moment, we will give you tonight's cast and tell you about next week's presentation in the Caltech Theatre. Ladies and gentlemen, the producer of tonight's Caltech's play, Kresik Jenkinson. Thank you. The Queen Came By was written by R.F. Delderfield and adapted for radio by John Crane. In the starring role you heard... I played Emmy. This was Neva Carglin. <laughs> the supporting cast was as follows. Kitty Julianna Allen. 
Roger Graham Hill, Esther Moya O'Sullivan, Prisby Gordon Chater, Albert Keith Buckley, Mrs. Peel Winifred Green, and Maud Rosemary Webster. Thank you, Mr. Jenkinson. Next week in the Caltex Theatre, you will hear a gay and witty comedy from the London stage, The Policeman and the Lady, the light-headed, light-hearted tale of America's richest woman who hunted husbands on a Mediterranean island and wound up with more men than she could handle. Be listening next week for The Policeman and the Lady. Now this is your compere, Rick Hutton, bidding you good night on behalf of your hosts, Caltex Oil, marketers of Caltex Super Gasoline and Caltex Gasoline, the world-famous RPM 1030 Special Motor Oil, and Marfac Lubrication.